I recently did a video on how you can add remote control capability if you have a ground control 3.0 leveling system by Lippert and the RV manufacturer did not supply you with this remote. And if you want to watch that video, I'll post a link on how I did it. And when I did that project, I discovered that this remote can handle more than just the ground control. It can not only control the ground control 3 leveling system, but it can also simultaneously control a board that will give you some additional remote functionality. The other control board is available independently, and it comes in a 5 or 8 channel version, which will control motor circuits such as your slides. Now as this graphic shows, the same link remote can control both the leveling system board and the relay system board at the same time and seamlessly. So in other words, if you depress the leveling system function on the remote, it will control the leveling system. If you depress a slide out control, it will control the slide out. And you don't have to switch from one receiver to another. So actually one remote works with two different receivers. And as you may recall from the video that I did on the Ground Control 3 system, this remote is going to cost you about $220. And also, I bought this board. This is a 18698 Fusemux receiver board, 5 output. And this was also about $230. So you're going to have around $460 involved in this. However, I found this board, which is a... 18570, an eight channel board, identical except that it's got three more channels. Found that on eBay, brand new for $65. So, depends on where you get these, this could be a really inexpensive project. Now, the only caveat is you can buy these on eBay as well. However, these come in basically a couple different versions. One is a fused version, and one is a non fused version. And when you look at them, these fuses are connected to these outputs. In the non-fuse version, there are no fuses on board and you gotta supply your own fuses. The difference is, you program those fuses with this remote. And an older remote will not have the ability to program these fuses. So if you're going to use a fuse board, you have to have a remote that can program the fuses. Now, I suppose there's no issue in using the older boards, which you probably can. I don't see why you can't. But just remember, you'll have to supply your own fuses. And as well, these are the only ones that I am aware of that are still being produced by the factory. The non-fuse boards, I believe, are obsolete. On the edge here, so here we've got controls for external switch minus, external 3 plus, external 2 plus, external 1 plus, battery and ground. Then here, We've got function 1 minus, function 1 plus, function 2 minus, function 2 plus, function 3 minus, function 3 plus, function 4 minus, function 4 plus. And then we have two that say CAN. Those, I believe, are CAN bus. So now let's try to do some programming on a remote to see if we can get this board to work. And I've already configured this previously for my ground control system, so we'll see that when we do the initial programming. And Lippert likes to do things five times, so this is no different. We need to depress this switch five times. And then we get a config button here. Do you want to reset the pin code? Well, that was the pin code that I put in. I'm going to say no, I don't want to reset it. And so now we say choose function one, and it's preset to none. So we can scroll through all the predefined functions to set channel 1, which is going to be this channel here. So we're going to start, this is channel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Our choices are main slide, bedroom slide, galley slide, kitchen slide, closet slide, optional slide, slide 1, slide 2, slide 3, slide 4, slide 5, door side slide, off door slide, awning, awning 1, awning 2, Landing gear, front stabilizer, rear stabilizer, TV lift, bed lift, bath vent, door lock, generator, stall lights, main lights, bath lights, bunk lights, bed lights, cabinet lights, exterior lights 1, exterior lights 2, exterior lights 3, and back to none. For now, just go to slide 1, select. 
Now we go to function 2. We're going to say that is slide 2. In function 3, we're going to go to slide 3, function 4, slide 4, function 5, slide 5, function 6, let's call it awning, and function 7, awning 1. Configure leveler type 1, and we're going to say yes because we want to maintain that, because that's our ground control. Configure leveler type 2, this is for the hydraulic version, which we don't have, we're going to say no. So here we go, we have function 1, slide 1, function 2, slide 2, and so on. And now we need to sync the remote. And to do that, we need to push this programming button down and hold it, and then to press sync remote and then say OK. Now you may have heard a single click. Next it's going to ask us to configure fuses. Now this took a little bit of time to figure out because the documentation isn't 100%. You have to configure the fuses to get this to work. So we want to say yes. Now enter a fuse config pin. Well this was very difficult. I could not find this anywhere. And Lippert suggests to contact your RV's manufacturer for the pin. But finally I discovered what it is. And I don't know why they hide this behind the pin. But to get the pin you've got to go to my website. And you can find it there. So I'm going to put the pin in. And then we have another menu. Choose slide 1 fuse. We have four options. We have fuse 1, 2, 3, and 4. Currently we have a 30 amp fuse here, a 20 amp here, 15 here, and a 10. Well let's say slide 1 is a big slide, so we want to use a 30 amp fuse, so we're going to use position 1. Select that. And then the other two slides we have, we're going to use 20 amp fuses because they're Schwintex. So we can use fuse position 2 for slide 2, and then Fuse position 2 for slide 3. And we're not going to run to both slides at the same time, so this 20 amp, you know, it's going to work okay. And then slide 4, you know, we're going to do the same thing. Let's say we have a Schwintec here, and then we'll just use position 1 again. Awning, let's say we're going to use position 3. You know, I'm just saying these arbitrarily right now. Fuse position 4, and see we have four positions plus none, which actually shuts it off. Okay, so now we have the fuses. We again want to send configuration, so we push our programming button down. This time you should have heard two clicks of the relay, which means it's okay. Now we're saying okay. So now we're all programmed, and we put a pin in, and now we have all of our menus. We have our slides that we programmed, and the awning. So I thought I would do a little test on the 8 channel board, and I will assure you that other than the 3 extra channels, the 5 channel board will work identically. So again, the 7 channels that are motor control are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Channel number 8 is dedicated to a light. And this is a power source for the remote switches that would give you manual control, say, from your console on your RV. And so that we can see what is going on, I've attached an LED to each one of these channels, as you can see here. Now, you wouldn't normally have LEDs on this channel, and they didn't come with them, but I'm just putting them on here temporarily so we can see what voltages that are coming out of each one of these terminals. And these LEDs here are bi-directional, which means that with the positive and negative being on one orientation on these pins, this will be green, and then when it's flipped, so then you have negative and positive, it will turn red. So this can tell us if this isn't a forward or reverse motor, because as you know, with a DC motor, it's going to change directions depending on how you uh, wire the positive and negative. We've got to turn on the board. 
and you see we have three lights on. Now two of these are fused and one isn't. And you're going to have to go look at my schematic on my website. But the purpose of these are to power these switches that are in your console. So your RV for every slide should have a switch that will extend the slide, it will retract the slide. We're going to parallel that with these so we can also control that slide with a remote control. However, if you depress the retract button on the slide on the wall and then you uh, command the same channel to do the extend function, it's going to put a short rate directly across the battery. And to prevent that, we can wire our mechanical switches to these and you'll see every time we invoke one of these controls, these will shut off. So basically what it does is every time you use the remote control to move a slide in or out, this module turns off the power to the manual switch on the console for the duration of when you have the slide moving in and out with the remote. And you'll understand that if you look at my schematic on the website. So the first one we're going to do is the light. And this is a latching type channel, so what I mean by that, if you depress the light button, then whatever light we had connected would turn on. And you depress it again, and it turns off. And we can see that in this diagram. When the light button is depressed, the function goes to 12 volts. And it stays there because it's latched. Then when the light is depressed again, it shuts off. The rest of these operate differently. So if we go to slide one, then we're presented with two buttons, a button going out and a button going in. And if you push this button down, and as long as you hold it, you'll see that that green light is on. If I let go of the button, the green light goes off. And then after a couple seconds, these blue lights turn back on, which then allows you to control the slide with these switches on the wall. So basically what this does is it interrupts the power going to those switches again so we don't short things out. Now if we want to retract the slide, you'll see that that turns red. And that means that the voltage is reversed on these two pins. So again, that allows the motor control to go one direction or another. Also notice that these are not latching. It only is active for length of time that I hold this button down. If I let go of the button, then it interrupts. Then it turns off. And then the same thing can be said for the rest of them. So we have slide one and two, and then we want to go to the awning. The awning is going to operate the same way, although it's on this channel now. So that's the basic functionality of this. We have seven motor control circuits and one lighting circuit. And what we're looking at here is basically the functionality of the relationship between the extend and retract button to the output and as well to the external switch that powers the manual switches for the slides. If you depress the extend button, 12 volts is applied to the function minus terminal and ground is on the function plus terminal. And the external switch goes from 12 volts down to ground and then returns back to 12 volts about 8 seconds after the button is released. In contrast, if you depress the retract button, then the function plus terminal goes to 12 volts, and the function minus terminal stays at ground, and again, the external switch shuts off for a duration of 8 seconds after you release the button. So basically that's how the remote wireless function works with the motor control type switches. Now we do have one other weird feature of this system and you can program one of these motor circuits to act as a light circuit. And to do that we're going to change function one from a momentary motor control circuit to a light circuit. And we do that just by finding the light main lights. That sounds good enough. We'll select that and then we'll just go through the menu again. And yes, no, and we just sync the remote again by depressing sync. Okay, and we don't have to configure the fuses. Okay, but now 
you see we had slide one here before now we have main lights and when we press that you'll see the green light come on but it's momentary for this to work for lights it should stay on but it doesn't so this is not a latching situation where it should be. And you also notice that unlike when you go into the slides and you're presented an up and down, you only have the one function here. In this scenario, when we program a motor type channel to handle a light, things get wacky. When we press the light button, 12 volts appears on the function plus terminal. Ground stays on the function minus terminal. And again, the external switch shuts off for eight seconds after the light button is released. You'll notice there is no negative side reversal here. And you'll also notice that this is momentary. Ideally, this should be a latching situation, but it's not. So this is dependent on the lighting equipment that you connect this to to actually do the latching function. And in fact, one of the other side projects I have on here, I'm currently designing some custom modules like this. And the modules that I'm going to have are going to allow us to control some lights from these non-latching outputs. So for example, the LEDs in your main cabin lights or your LED long yawning or whatever, I'm going to build in an off-on type uh, latch so that we can depress the remote once, turn it on, depress the remote again and turn it off. Also, I'm going to incorporate a dimmer. So on, dim, off. So that's going to be one of the functions I'm going to build into one of these modules that I'm going to custom build. And of course, I'll have that on my website and I'll be doing videos on how to build these. Right now we're in a design phase. Could take a month or two before I get these done. And also I'll be producing a video on actually building the thing into the RV.